2.65 average. I was actually considering dropping out. These girls were disgusting. You wake up to some man just hanging in front of my window. Hey guys, my name is Yubin and welcome to my channel if you're new here and if you've been watching my channel then hello. I know I don't really do these talking videos that much, but today I wanted to sit down and share with you my U of T story as a graduate. And I know I made one of these videos before right up here, but I just wanted to share the lessons that I've learned since then and talk more in depth about my academics and mental health. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. The questions that I'm going to be covering today are one, how did I get into studying neuroscience? Two, everything about my academics. Three, my mental health and living situation. And finally, my overall lessons of being an undergrad. So if we start with the most important question, why am I so passionate about neuroscience and what got me into it? I feel like this question could have a very, very long answer because I spend a lot of time thinking about why I'm passionate about neuroscience, but I guess the short reason why would be because I personally am very interested in learning about people, and I was always interested in learning about people and the human brain, but it was only when I got to university and started learning more about biology that I started to get into the biological side of neuroscience because, you know, neuroscience is very, very interdisciplinary and you can get into computational neuroscience, neurotechnology, and that's only two of them, but there's a lot. It's a neuroscience is an umbrella term. And so there's a lot of opportunities out there as somebody who is passionate about neuroscience. One story that's worth mentioning is the event that I ended up going to in first year that got me hooked onto neuroscience. And this was pretty much by chance that I discovered the Neuroscience Association for Undergraduate Students, which I eventually became an exec of later on, but that's another story. But essentially I found them at the club's fair during Frosh Week talked to them and I ended up attending one of their annual neuroscience conferences. And this was the first time that I was exposed to researchers who were very passionate about what they were talking about and they were sharing about their work. And I think this really shaped me into the individual that I am in terms of neuroscience research. So I think getting these positive influences from people who are much older than me and people who are much more experienced than me helped shape my kind of widespread passion into one concentration of neuroscience. So that was a short slash long explanation of why I really got into neuroscience. So now let's talk about my academics. I know this is probably the most juiciest part that everybody wants to hear about, so here we go. And I'm actually going to pull up my transcript over here because I have no secrets. And I am going to show you all my failures and I'm going to show you all of my successes. <laughs> going from first year to third year, I feel like there was a lot of growth and it's very evident in my transcript. But let's start with first year. So in first year, as you can see, I only took three courses in both semesters. And this is because I actually failed Physics 131, which was which I was taking in first semester. And I also failed the midterm for Bio 130, which I was taking in the second semester. So clearly having come from a pretty good high school, having decent grades in high school, this was a very shocking thing to me. And I was actually considering dropping out of U of T and moving back to Ottawa U at this time which I'm glad my parents talked me out of because I think, well, I wouldn't be where I am today if that had happened. But yeah, so I was not a very good student in first year, mostly because I had trouble adjusting to living out on my own. And I also had trouble adjusting to the workload. And the workload at university, people may have told you if you're not in university yet and you plan on going, People may have told you that the workload is a lot higher in university compared to high school. 
And I thought, you know, I did IB, so it should be not that bad. But really, the workload that you get in university is a completely different ballpark from high school in many, many ways. There's just a lot of content and a lot less time. So you really have to figure out how to study effectively in order to get through this but I did not know how to study effectively in, at this time. And I think a lot of first year students struggle with that. And that's not really an issue because that just means there's a lot of room for growth. So the reason why I took this failure very harshly was because Bio 130, which is the midterm I failed, was the only course that really mattered for me to get into the neuroscience specialist program. And that's why I started taking summer school. So as you can see here, I did much better in summer school and I just made it to a 4.0, which was pretty exciting to me because that meant that I had a pretty good chance of getting into the neuroscience specialist program. And I did. At the end of the summer, it was a pretty good time for me. Fast forward two, three weeks to second year. If you know anything about U of T Life Sci, you probably heard that second year life sci at u of t is brutal and by brutal i mean crying every single week failing midterms it felt like a jumble of courses and material so much material to cover and so little time this semester was the worst semester of my life and clearly that was reflected in my SGPA, which was a 2.65. And if you're trying to go to med school or even grad school, actually, this is not good. This is not going to get you into anywhere because you're literally close to failing. So this was a bad time for me mentally as well. But then eventually uh, winter break came. The semester was over. I had survived. I came home, recharged a bit and went back for second semester. And this was the first semester where I actually kept up with five courses. And if you see my transcript here, I did do a lot better in my courses. But when everything was starting to go right for me, COVID decided to happen. When COVID hit, I had quite a bit of trouble adjusting to the isolation at the beginning because I missed my friends. I was back in Ottawa and I couldn't see anybody. We were just stuck at home and for a while, it was really difficult to focus on work, but eventually I got the hang of it and I realized that living at home is actually very comfortable and I was getting treated like a princess, like my mom was cooking me food, I had a comfortable bed with no roommate to go home to, and I actually did hop on to that self-development bandwagon and I started this YouTube channel, which helped me kind of stay motivated to keep studying. So I got the hang of it and ended the semester with pretty decent marks for the first time in my university career. So that was the end of second year. During COVID, I realized that, you know, my internship got canceled and I didn't really have that much to do, but I was in that grind mindset. And I was like, I need to get research experience. I ended up doing a research course on the neurobiology of sleep. And I actually helped write a book chapter for a clinician's guidebook on the importance of sleep in trauma patients. So that was very exciting to me. I learned a lot of neurobiology, although it was mostly literature reviews and stuff like that. But this was pretty much when my interest in research started to spark. Halfway through third year, I realized that I could actually graduate a little early because of A, my IB credits, and B, my summer courses that I have been doing pretty much nonstop. So I decided to do that, but that was only possible if I overloaded on courses in my second semester of third year and in summer. Knowing that I would be living in a comfortable home for the rest of the year, I decided to take the leap and overload on the courses because I just knew that no matter what, I could cry to my mom. So as you can see here, I did end up overloading on my courses in the second semester and in summer. I actually had to ask for a special permission to take an extra course in the summer because technically you're only allowed to take four but I did decently in all of them and I finished off the year and my undergraduate career very strong. That was a very, very long way of saying 
that I went from failing courses in first year, dropping courses, crying a lot, considering dropping out, getting a two point what was it? 2.65 average in second year, all the way to graduating, just barely, but graduating with a high distinction. I'm pretty much patting myself on the back for that because I didn't even know that I was able to recover from that, let alone recover quickly enough to graduate early. So I may sound boastful, but after sharing all of these failures with you, I hope you are inspired by this because if I did it, then you can do it too. Like if you're struggling in first year right now, then chances are you're just adjusting. And if you try hard enough, if you take care of yourself well enough, you will get better. That's my motivational piece for this video. Let's quickly talk about my living situation and my mental health. So in first year, I was living in Whitney Hall, which is one of the old dorm buildings in University College. And the funny thing about this building was that it had co-ed bathrooms, which at first I found kind of disgusting and it felt very weird to me, but I eventually got used to it and that was fine and all. But first year was definitely a very exploratory, meeting new people every single day and kind of chaotic experience which i would never go back to like i would never ever live in a dorm ever again even if i got paid to do it i would not do it again but i definitely don't regret the experience and i think that this experience pretty much contributed to shaping me into who i am today because it really helped me develop social skills and meet new people and get to experience living on campus which was beautiful. Like I remember walking from Whitney Hall to Convocation Hall in like five minutes and enjoying that those big trees that were there. I would always take pictures of them, but I would definitely not do it again, especially because I was living with a roommate and I would prefer to have my own space. I also tried living in Innes during the summer months, which I didn't really enjoy partially because I didn't really have good mental health at that time in my life but also because I didn't like living with four different roommates and we had a shared kitchen and let me tell you, these girls were disgusting and I like to consider myself a very clean person, which I learned after living out with other people. I literally could not use the kitchen because we had a fruit fly infestation for basically the whole summer because one of the girls just did not want to put their food waste away. So it was just not a very good time living with other people. Otherwise, I would recommend Innes for sure if you don't mind living with other people because the residence is very, very clean and more modern than Whitney Hall. And then second year, I was living with a roommate, but unfortunately, I again did not have my own room. This was in a downtown right on campus apartment and it was still pretty expensive. It was over a thousand per month per person, even without my own bedroom, which is quite a bit now that I think about it. But there was also a ton of construction and they were literally remodeling all of the balconies while people were living inside the buildings. So I would literally wake up to some man just hanging in front of my window, like drilling holes into the concrete. And the sound, I'm gonna play the video right now. <laughs> Yeah, it was that bad. I literally had to walk out of my house in the morning as fast as possible because they didn't care about whether people were sleeping on a Saturday night. And then I was living at home, which was the best experience out of all. So, so that is pretty much all of my academics and living situation. Now I just want to go over briefly the main lessons that I learned from my undergrad experience. And there are four main lessons. So the first one would be the importance of mental health and sleep. And before you skip through this part, because I know everybody tells you the same thing, like you have to take care of your body, you have to take care of your mental health, your sleep, blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, it it's cliche for a reason. If I learned anything during undergrad, it's not only the importance of having to take care of your body and your mental health, it's how to do it. Because taking care of yourself is a skill that you have to learn and a skill that you have to develop. You don't just walk out of your house and you're like, I suddenly know 
how to cook healthy and how to balance my life and how to set boundaries and maintain relationships while maintaining good grades and having a social life while working out and stuff like that. So it does take a while and I feel like that's just part of growing up, but going through university really helped me learn that because not only was I moving around from living area to living area, but I was also meeting a lot of new people and engaging with a lot of different thoughts and mindsets. And I feel like university is a very good place to get this type of interaction because it's filled with people who are trying to get a good education, right? They all want to strive for the best and kind of being in this community, I think helped me develop my motivation to be better at maintaining myself. So I guess that's kind of an abstract way to say that you should care about your body and your current mental health just as much as you care about your dreams and your passions because your current state is what's going to get you to that elevated state where you're achieving your goals, if that makes sense. Also, having learned about sleep, I just want to say one more time that if you maintain a good sleep schedule, I promise you everything in life will go the way that you want them to because Sleep influences the way that you think during the day, the way that you react to things during the day, and having a good night's sleep ensures that you're functioning optimally as a human being, right? If you're not sleeping properly, like how I was doing in first year, second year, even part of third year, you will always be functioning at like 60 to 70% maximum every single day. And do you really want that for your life? I don't think so. I would say the main, the best advice that I could give anyone would be to sleep properly. The second thing that I learned at university was how to study effectively. And I can make a whole video about this, but I took a long time to realize that writing all my notes down like two, three times is not an effective way to study. And reading and highlighting notes is not an effective way to study. The way to study is to figure out how I'm going to organize the given content into my head. So it's kind of about encoding rather than memorizing and retrieving the memory. So if you're un unfamiliar with these terms, they're kind of cognitive psychology terms, but basically what you wanna focus on is when you're learning something, when you're reading a textbook, for example, or a paper, you don't wanna just skim through it and be like, okay, I'll learn this in detail, I'll memorize this later. You don't want to do that. When you're learning, when you're reading, you want to think about the text in terms of the knowledge in your brain. So if you have kind of a library of knowledge in your brain and pretend that they're all books, you want to know where exactly that text is going in, which part of the bookshelf is it going in. So the real way to learn and succeed in learning, I would say, is not really to focus on making pretty notes so that you can memorize visually the notes. It's more about when you're taking in knowledge, you have to know where exactly it's going into your brain. So if I'm learning about, let's say, stem cells, then I have to think about, okay, why is learning about stem cells important to me? And then I would categorize it into my brain and I would think, okay, I need to know about stem cells because since I am interested in learning about neurodevelopmental disease, I need to learn how to use stem cells so that I can study these disorders. So I hope that makes sense, but that encoding part, that thinking about the content, thinking about thinking, the metacognition, that is kind of the higher level processing that will help you learn better. So that was a whole process and that took me three years to master and I think I'm still learning how to do it effectively but I definitely changed the way that I study since high school and first year and even since second year and after I switched my mindset about studying and learning that's when I started to get better grades. The third thing that I learned at U of T and in university was that you learn so much more than what you expect to learn at university. So in terms of academics and science, I learned way more than what I could have even imagined to learn in high school. Like I never would have thought I would have the amount of knowledge that I have in my head right now. And I really credit U of T for that because 
the amount of pain that I went through to put all of this knowledge into my head, the amount of pain equals the amount of gain, you know? It's cliche, but it's true. And I think that's a kind of good transition into my final and most important moral of my U of T experience. And it's that the greater the challenge, the greater the growth. I think this is something that people could tell you, and I think this is something that you could read somewhere online, but until you actually experience it, you won't really, really know it in your heart. And I know it in my heart because I went through pain, blood, sweat, tears to get to where I am today. And I don't think I would be the confident and strong and I would even say intelligent individual that I am today if I had not gone through all of that. So I really think that my experience at U of T, although it was painful and although it was difficult and I wanted to give up a lot of the times, I don't regret it at all. And although I don't know if I would do it again willingly, I am definitely proud of myself for doing what I did. And yeah. So that pretty much concludes my long story about my U of T experience, but I really hoped you enjoyed it and I hope it inspires you or motivates you or somehow makes you feel better about yourself right now because, I mean, look at these grades. Let me know in the comments if you have anything to share for yourself or anything that you wanted to talk about or if you have any questions about U of T or my experience. And my DMs on Instagram at Yubin is always open. So if you want to reach out to me and talk a little bit more, then I'll respond to you at the best of my abilities. And yeah, so while I'm here, I'll just quickly update what I'm going to be doing next. I'm actually moving to Montreal to do my master's in neuroscience. So that's really exciting because I actually get to do the research that I've been dreaming of doing since first year. So I'm very excited for that. And I'm actually going to be continuing to vlog to the best of my abilities. So hopefully we can stay in touch. And yeah, that concludes the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.